Connie is the spacecraft communicator talking directly with the crew. To his right is veteran astronaut Mike Fole, a veteran of the Mir space station, a long duration flight on the Mir, and the Expedition 8 commander several years ago. Ironically, one of the Endeavor crew members, Mike Fink, himself a uh, two-time long duration crew member aboard the International Space Station, will surpass Mike Fole tomorrow for the number two spot on the all-time list for days in space by U.S. astronauts. He will uh, surpass the 374-day mark currently held by Fole, putting Fole in third place on that list. Mike Fink will vault uh, over Peggy Whitson, the chief of the astronaut office, to become the all-time record holder for most days in space by U.S. astronauts on Friday when he surpasses the 377-day mark. Aboard the International Space Station, uh, the departing crew led by Soyuz Commander Dmitry Kondratiev uh, is uh, completing preparations uh, to say farewell to the rest of the station crew members. The uh, shuttle crew is uh, in the midst of a sleep period. Time will tell whether, if, whether in fact, uh, they are, in fact, asleep. Uh, the curiosity and the adrenaline uh, caused by the departure in this dynamic operation about to unfold throughout the course of the afternoon and evening hours uh, might be irresistible for the shuttle crew, so we'll see whether any of them are awake as well. But the uh, farewell and departure is coming up uh, in the next 20 minutes when Kondratiev, Coleman, and Nespoli say farewell uh, to the uh, remaining space station crew members, the new station commander, Andrei Batasenka, Alexander Samokutiaev, and uh, Ron John Garin, the NASA flight engineer, who were launched uh, back on April 5th, docking to the space station on April 7th for, uh, for um, Batasenka, Garin, and Samokutiaev. This is their 48th day in space, their 46th day aboard the International Space Station. At the time of their landing at 9.26 and 41 seconds p.m. Central Time tonight, Kondratiev, Coleman, and Nespoli will have completed 159 days in space since their launch in their Soyuz TMA-20 spacecraft from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan back on December 15th, docking to the Rosviet module at the Nader port of the uh, Zarya module of the International Space Station, the Earth-facing port, uh, which is Rosviet. Uh, they docked uh, to Rosviet uh, back on uh, December 17th. 159 days in space will have been logged at the time of their landing, 157 days aboard the International Space Station. For Katie Coleman, wrapping up her third flight into space, the first two having uh, been uh, conducted on the space shuttle, she will have logged 179 days in space on her three flights. For Paolo Nespoli, the European Space Agency flight engineer, he will have completed 174 days in space on his two flights. And of course, for Kondratiev, the Soyuz commander, and the off-going station commander who handed over control and command of the International Space Station to his colleague Andre Batasenka yesterday. He will have completed 159 days in space on this, his first flight. You will hear from time to time from the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolyov outside of Moscow the reference to the Soyuz TMA-20 under the call sign of Varangian. That was the name selected by Kondratiev uh, for the name of Vikings who came across Eastern Europe in the ninth century uh, to form uh, the uh, early stages of modern Russia uh, in 862 A.D. So you'll be hearing the call sign Varangian uh, called out by the Russian flight control team in Korolyov, who will have uh, control of the operation of the undocking uh, and the eventual landing of the Soyuz TMA-20 uh, throughout the course of the day today. What makes uh, today's activity all the more interesting are the imagery operations that are scheduled uh, to take place uh, at a distance of about 180 meters directly uh, behind uh, the Rosviet module following the undocking and the first of the uh, separation burns, a manual separation burn to begin a separation rate uh, by the Soyuz from the Rosviet module and the International Space Station. At the point uh, at which uh, the Soyuz uh, moves to 180 meters uh, directly behind Rosviet, Kondratiev will put the brakes on and uh, perform station keeping. Uh, the International Space Station will conduct 
a 129 degree maneuver, that's about two tenths of a degree per second for about 15 minutes total, to an attitude designed to provide the best perspective of the International Space Station and the docked Endeavour Space Shuttle for Nespoli to begin imagery acquisition using a digital camera as well as a high definition video camera from uh, the habitation module, that's the upper portion of the Soyuz vehicle, uh, the uh, habitation module also known as the orbital module, the bulbous section at the very top of the uh, Soyuz vehicle. He will be looking out of a window called the blister window to give him the best perspective of the International Space Station as it is maneuvered to capture a family portrait uh, and a never before seen portrait of the space shuttle docked to the International Space Station and the other partner modules including the European Space Agency's Johannes Kepler automated transfer vehicle that is docked to the F port of the Zvezda service module. The plan today, uh, as you can see from this animation, would have Nespoli beginning photography about five minutes before the space station maneuvers and to continue to capture still and video images for about ten minutes after the maneuver is complete. While Kondratiev is station keeping, Nespoli will pause imagery operations as required to take readings with a laser range finder providing uh, distance and range information for Kondratiev and Katie Coleman who will be seated to Kondratiev's right and the right seat of the descent module of the Soyuz TMA-20. The station keeping uh, will be completed when Kondratiev performs a final separation burn of about uh, three quarters of a meter per second. The timeline has the last five minutes of operations uh, in the habitation module after that uh, final separation burn is complete. 48 minutes after undocking, uh, and once uh, the imagery acquisition is completed, Nespoli will remove uh, the uh, media cards uh, from the digital camera and the high definition camera for return to Earth. He will secure both of those cameras in the habitation module, return to the descent module, close the hatch uh, for the final time, after which uh, renewed leak checks will be uh, repeated. Uh, as well as suit leak checks for all three crew members on board uh, to ensure that they have a, an airtight seal between the descent module and the uh, orbital or habitation module up top uh, before they begin the deorbit burn uh, to initiate their descent back into the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, as you know, uh, or uh, as we have shown before in other Soyuz uh, landings, uh, the three compartments, the orbital, the descent, and the instrumentation and propulsion modules of the Soyuz TMA-20 uh, are uh, pyrotechnically separated uh, right before uh, the uh, entry interface is accomplished, or actually right uh, just a couple of minutes before atmospheric entry uh, to enable the descent module to be in the right orientation for its heat shield to be pointed in the direction of travel and ablate uh, the heat uh, from the uh, forces of re-entry uh, prior to the time of the uh, deployment of the parachutes, first drogue chutes then a main parachute, allowing the Soyuz to sway gently down to its landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan. The uh, recovery operations led by the Russian Search and Recovery Forces under the name of Rosera Navigatsia, the civil uh, uh, agency that uh, performs uh, this operation, uh, they uh, were flown uh, to Karaganda, which is about 460 kilometers to the northeast of Jezkazgan on Sunday uh, to begin uh, to stage for the landing operations. Yesterday uh, in the early morning hours, the wee hours U.S. time, the uh, Helicopters, the Russian Mi-8 helicopters deployed for Jezkazgan. The way today's uh, landing operations will uh, take place, four Mi-8 helicopters will deploy from Jezkazgan to the landing site, distance of about 145 kilometers. That should be about a uh, 25 to 30 minute helicopter ride. Two additional Mi-8 helicopters will deploy uh, to the uh, southwest of the prime landing site uh, in what is known as the ballistic landing site. Uh, that uh, would be uh, the area that uh, the Soyuz would descend to in the unlikely event of a shortfall or an engine, uh, an early engine problem or some other issue that would cause the Soyuz to fall short of its intended target.
Two additional Mi-8 helicopters will also be deployed further to the southwest uh, in the event uh, of an even uh, more severe ballistic entry. But again, everything is expected to go on uh, the nominal timeline, providing uh, the landing of the Soyuz vehicle at 9.26 and 41 seconds p.m. Central Time tonight uh, to wrap up uh, this 159-day mission for these three crew members. That will be 8.26 and 41 seconds a.m. Kazakhstan time on Tuesday uh, at the landing site, which is about uh, uh, two hours and 50 minutes after sunrise. Activation, uh, activation activities. Uh, uh, we don't have telemetry. Go ahead. Question one. Have you activated uh, PBK? Yes. Uh, did you uh, remove the cap off of the uh, orbital module cartridge? Yes. And where did, which status, which position did you put DSD? DSD. What? DSD. Uh, the pressure switch. At 700. Copy 700. Dmitry, as soon as you have uh, time, before you uh, close the hatch, we would like to get uh, 403 from you. Uh, I can uh, that uh, later we've got 20 minutes till we close the hatch. Well, we start our operations in eight minutes. Okay, I will call you, Sasha. We're about 10 minutes away uh, from the expected uh, closing of the hatches uh, between uh, the Soyuz TMA-20 vehicle and uh, the International Space